Welcome back. It is round three, game one here. Playing with Demir Eldrazi aggro mid range concoction, as you can see by our opening hand. Uh, I'm Kong Woods. This is TCGPlayer.com. Some standard. Thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to keep our hand. We have a bunch of castables. Three of them, in fact. Although I wouldn't really count this as a castable. We're on the draw, so we're likely to hit some more land drops. We do play 24 lands in this deck. And our curve is relatively low. We have a lot of things to spend our mana on, and we have like things like ruins that allow us to, to do stuff with our mana later on. Definitely just gonna grab a sunken hollow with this. It's generally the, the first land you wanna grab. Um, most decks you wanna go basic, basic sunken ruins or whatever, but because a lot of our color intensive cards are two mana, um, grabbing it first is, is pretty helpful. Opponent is on Jund. Just another nut deck. That's what Jund stands for, if you didn't know. I made that up. Don't go down with people that. They'll think you're crazy. Ooh, I like that. Generally, if you don't have a reason to play the Fathom Fear, you don't need to on turn two. It, it exiles things, which is nice. Alright, he's got a bunch of lands. Ruinous Path. I'm going to take this Dark Dwellers because it's just the strongest card. Not too worried about the ruinous path. I could take that with a thought Nazi or something. Let me pop this back up. What was other cards? Fire impulse grasp. Okay. Hmm. In this case, I'm gonna play this in a fathom feeder because I have extra fathom feeder action. I want to take a turn off to play the Ruins anyway, so that this can get out of Fiery Impulse range. And he'll use some removal spell on this, almost certainly. I feel like to sneeze. It's the worst. The mo oh, he... Yeah, he, he, <coughs> he Fiery Impulse. So now he's got a Grasp. And a Ruinous Pass. Ooh, this guy's going to be sick this game. I was just trying to see if he accidentally grasped or uh, fiery impulses this, but he didn't. He'll probably end up grasping it. But again, we get we get card advantage out of that. He did not do so. Okay. We're looking pretty good. We have removal spell. If I draw a land, I can play this thought not seer and protect it from grasp. By protect it from grasp, I mean I can have it stay around long enough to keep to, to snag the grasp of darkness itself i can't actually make unless you have two ruins out you can't actually protect it from grasp if you don't take the grasp so like that two grasp of darkness you're still going to lose your guy uh, battlefield l battlefield though he used ruinous path and not grasp there interesting He can't grasp me, so well, I'm taking this Dark Roller, so. And then we do this. And now we're protected from grasp. Now he's got a dead card in his hands. <laughs> Alright. This game's looking good. He can hissing quagmire our dude, but that is far from scary. Ooh. Alright, so we're gonna we're gonna attack. He's got to activate, he's got to tap down two of his black sources for him to block Thoughtseer here. So he won't build a grasp afterwards. And then I could steal at minimum the grasp from his hand or whatever card I give him with this thought knot. Oh, I did not expect him to do this play. Um, okay, that's fine too. So I'll give him a card and then I'm just gonna eat his land with bear response. Oops. As my as my alarm. Professional as it gets, Conley Woods. Alright, alarm off. 
my apologies. All right, so his guy lives. He gets a card out of me. Uses grasp, so it's not that big of a deal. And now I'm just gonna eat his dude. I could thought not him here, but getting getting a land out of this is too good of a deal. Because we can, we're gonna do this. We still have three cards in our hand. Including inverter, which again, we're just you just basically hold inverter for as long as you can because you want as few things to be able to actually take it out when it does come down. Obnixilis is a big pain in the butt, though. Um, I kind of want to cast two creatures this turn. Uh, I can't actually warping wheel his thing. Is it time for big daddy inverter to come down? I'm not sure, it might not be. Hmm. <laughs> Obnixilis is definitely annoying. I think I just cast this guy. And I put a counter on it and I leave open warping wheel. This will still eat Quagmire, which is pretty nice. Um, but I can also counter a sorcery with this play. He did not cast a sorcery, he cast that dude. Wow. He just had actual everything. <sighs> I'm in a bit of trouble now. Because I get exiled. <clears throat> I have no way to deal with this Kalidus. Man, am I just I think I'm just dead. This game was looking excellent for me, then Omnixless came down. And then like a perfect flurry of cards after that too. He had no cards in his hand. Wow, man. Hmm. I don't think I could win from here, but I guess I'll keep trying. Oh, I tapped terribly too. Jeez. Literally tapped all my color sources. He has another. <laughs> It doesn't matter because he's going to kill my guy here, so I'm just going to keep opening my colors. But I should have obviously tapped either Island or Sunken Hollow. Oh, he drew a card instead. Okay. Actually can't win. <clears throat> there's like, there's actually it's nothing I could do from this point. This game's kind of like I kind of just want to concede right now because there's all I'm gonna do is show him cards, and all the cards he has are pretty obvious. They're just all done stuff. I'll wait to the end of this turn. I'm just gonna concede probably. This one, okay. Man, can't beat the top of the deck. Um, Horribly Rai, again, is pretty good. He's got Nissa, Kalidus, a bunch of stuff like that. He also, the Planeswalker is going to be super annoying. I have stuff to deal with it, but... Inverter Troop is going to be sweet that game. And it wasn't. This card's terrible. Counters removal, which is worse than just Psychic Arrest.
I think I want to keep some number of wasteland stranglers, but I don't know how many. Might just be. Hmm. Fairland Plague's pretty good against him too. Let's see, he's got he's got one Nissa. He might have the other Nissa. He's got Kalidus. Is that it? Probably is all the token making he's got actually. Alright, I'm just gonna try this. Alright, back for round three, game two. Lost that last one. Tough, tough fought match. Uh, we're going to keep this. We got the rest and then a bunch of cool stuff after that. Swamp Arena. Likely it's going to get removal, but we're looking for a Planeswalker specifically. There's a Chandra. He's got Sylvan Advocate. So I likely need to horribly arrive that Sylvan Advocate. I'm not too worried about any of this individual one for one removal, so I'm just gonna take the Chandra. As you saw the last game, like it's just the heavy hitters that matter. That we, we did everything we could to one for one and get as much value as possible that entire game. And then Obnixos came down and we weren't able to answer it right away. And our deck's actually not that bad against planeswalkers in general. It is I do kinda wanna play Ruinous Path over Ooh, that's kind of a good one. Um, but I'm going to horribly awry this so an advocate first. Alright, so what do we know he has? We has Ruinous Path at the minimum. Oh, he didn't have... What am I looking at? Oh, I'm looking at last game's log? Oh my gosh. I just got so lucky. <laughs> oh, I know what you saw that. I thought yeah, I looked at the log and I saw the Ruinous Path and then the other two cards were Fire Impulse, Grasp of Darkness and I remembered those. So I was like, oh, he's got Ruinous Path. <laughs> That's all right. We get we get rid of the big bad Obnixilus. That was uh, <laughs> slightly lucky. When Moto logs that, I I can't cast the Matter Reshaper, but I will run out of Infiltrator this turn. We'll probably end up killing it. Maybe he activates Quagmire though, and we get to trade with Quagmire. Nope, that's not going to happen. Um, instead, he's gonna get our matter reshaper. I kind of don't want to cast this, but I kind of do. He's gonna one for one it. I'll just wait. I have so many color sources in my deck. That's not one of them. <laughs> if nothing else, he can't attack with a quagmire as long as I have these infiltrators. It could be greedy to hold them here, but I mean, they're just getting one for one, so it's like, kind of, I don't know. I would rather, oops. Like now I can, I can at least make him think twice before he, uh, before he aims at it. And again, he has to, he doesn't get to know the result of the flip. So if he wants to respond twice, he has to he has to do it immediately. If he wants to like ensure my guy's dead. All right, big money. Yes, that's how you do it. That's how you two for one with your two drop. <laughs> now the grasp of darkness, I'm totally fine just losing my guy too. So I'm just gonna cast another infiltrator at the end of his turn. Let him grasp it because grasp is so important in this matchup. He gets to do things like, uh, like kill Thought Not Seer.
What does he even cast? He gets to transgress me. Uh, that's kind of gross. So he gets a wasteland stranger. I'm then gonna eat his dude. So it's not that bad. And I'll have a two one in play. F6. So he gets Wasteland Strangler. <laughs> that was not a bad draw. Alright, we're mounting our comeback. And by comeback, I mean from the match. <laughs> Because we actually have weren't that down in this game ever really. So he's got grasp and unknown. He still does not have enough black to activate his and Quagmire. Oh, he's got a dent protector. That's not good. That is not good. Oh, and he drew a fire impulse. But he can't grasp me. He didn't leave open grasp mana. Interesting. Unfortunately. If that's just a den protector, he's gonna keep back Goblin Dark Dwellers, Dwellers me, and I can't do anything about that. I mean, I still am just gonna run this out. Got the most value, it's a two for one. Two for one, if he didn't have Dark Dwellers, a two for one right back, but. He didn't flip it. Oh, people are forgetting to respond to it. It's so beautiful. I'm getting so lucky. People just do not realize that it is a on the stack trigger. It's when you cast, not when it's cat. That's when it resolves. Oh man, he's got grasp in hand, and I can't do anything about it. I even had horribly arrived for that stupid thing too. If, if I draw a land and get to Reality Shaper, I should be okay, but... He's aggro-breaking fetches here. Oh, I should've just activated it. No, I guess he could've responded. So if he grasps me, he... So he has to... Okay. I feel pretty comfortable at this point. Actually, should I just matter Reshaper? Matter Reshaper might be better. Oh, he can't actually grasp this. He could block with Hissing Quagmire. That's kind of bad for me, too. So I should probably just Matter Reshaper. Leave open Horribly Awry, I guess, maybe? I'm not sure. It's kind of a tough call. He's not grasping. Does he not have grasp? Am I just like totally off on him having this Grasp of Darkness that I thought he's had all game? No, because I saw it when I looked at Obnixos. He had Grasp and... No... Yeah, he's got to have Grasp. What the hell is going on? Why would he take six? Alright, well... Now this is obviously the play. I have Horribly Awry open for any creature, and I have Matter Reshape for next turn. Not for any creature, I suppose, but... Get lucky. Oh, he gets exiled. I don't get to get lucky. Never mind. Alright, I'm at 10. You're at 10. No creature. He can block and take and go to one. He gets a dude, but this gives us two plus one plus one counters. I 
I think he's going to win this game. I think the lifelink is going to be too much. Assuming he sacrificed those zombies, which he should. Oh, he drew. What does he draw? Ugh. That's rough. I must say, my opponent's top decks have been reasonably good. I think he's also got a slight edge in this matchup just in general because it's a uh, it's mid range on mid range and he gets to go over the top. He doesn't have lethal. He doesn't get to say okay. I can't break this fetch land. I guess if I draw like a bearer of silence or not a bearer of silence, a reality smasher, I might have a small chance. But he's going to six. Oh what do you draw? What do you draw? No, he's just sacrificing, okay. So it goes to eight. Reality Smasher. That's all I've ever wanted in the history of things. Alright, we lose. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, actually, I guess I could bounce. Oh no, these guys can't block. <laughs> they can't block. They got that little line of text at the bottom, they can't block. Uh, all right. Well, let's go out like a man. <laughs> that was—I don't even know what that means. All right. Well, we lost. Uh, unfortunately, that that match was pretty tough. I think he just got better card advantagey things uh, between his planeswalkers and um, Kalidus is pretty annoying. I, I mean, we have answers to Kalidus, but we just had a, a shields down moment with our horribly awry where he was able to sneak it in. Um, but yeah, not much you could do there, unfortunately. I still, uh, I like this deck a lot. I think there are some, definitely some improvements we need to make with it. Uh, but yeah, it seems it seems pretty sweet. It does a lot of cool things that uh, Eldrazi decks I have been personally wanting to see do, but have not. So um, we'll bring you probably more of this deck. Uh, definitely check out the little bit of write-up that goes with it. And uh, as always, I'm Conley Woods, TCG player. Thank you for watching me battle some Demir Eldrazi. And uh, we'll be back next time. Take care.